is day two of Jungle Journey Science Catastrophic Eruption. Okay, so today we are talking about the third C, catastrophe, creation, corruption, catastrophe. And we're talking a bit about when God judged the world for the sin and then the flood. So we're talking a bit about underwater volcanoes and how they erupted and the waters from the deep were coming up and then flooding the world and then the world was splitting apart. So the kids, of course, always love to have something like an eruption. So this was a big hit. So first thing we did to prep was we put half and half ketchup and vinegar into these little bottles that we had. And then we filled those the next part was to fill the syringes and what is in the syringe is baking soda and water that had a little bit of soap in it for the bubbles now this was a little bit tricky the easiest way that i found to fill these don't mix the water ahead of time go ahead and just fill these with baking soda i would scoop the baking soda and put it in here as far to the front as i could and empty it out and i would get two teaspoons of baking soda. Then, very gently, I would get my plunger in, and you have to go slowly or you get a big cloud of baking soda coming up, and push the plunger up to where you've got most of your baking soda going up high, so that there is room to then draw up the water when it's time for that. Now, a trick I found for drawing up the water is to cut off a half of a jug and pour your water in here. And then you can just draw the water up into the syringe like that, put your cap on and you have your mixture. When you shake it, it will go into solution, but it will settle out pretty quickly. So don't let that frighten you. Just tell the children, shake it, hold the lid on and shake it a little bit before uh, the experiment. We actually had ours shake this as well. So could you hold this for me, please? Thank you. So. Then when it was time to do this experiment, we had the kids shake it a little, take off their lids and place it in a big bowl that had lots of room to catch anything that spills over. Cause after all, it's an eruption, right? These are just those cone water cups you can get. These were six ounce. You set that right over the opening there and then shake this up, take the lid off and squirt it quickly down right into there. And there goes your volcano. That was catastrophic eruption. This is fallen foliage. Now, what this experiment is about is when sin entered the world, the animals, for instance, no longer were nice and sweet to all the other animals. They would trap them and kill them. Uh, the same way that sin can trap us and, and hold it in its bondage. So we're going to make a few different types of traps and let the kids experiment with trying to catch some things in their traps. So the first one we have here is a, just a simple pencil and we just tied some string onto the bottom there so that when something climbs under the box, by the way, this is just a regular gift box, like a shirt box, but if you do put some tape at each of the corners to keep it open, it works a lot better. But you tie this around and then you're going to put the, the eraser part down so that it doesn't slide. And then the kids can, I just got these little frogs from Oriental Trading. So he's going to try to catch my frog if I make him hop in there. Oh, there we go. So that's our first trap. Our second trap here is a bug catcher. So you just get people to donate their water bottles, um, pull off the label, get rid of the lids. I did notice when we were prepping that a lot of people took a lot of time to go around in a circle cutting, but I'm gonna show you a really easy trick here. I'm gonna squeeze that together and I'm just gonna cut right across. Whoops. Then any dent dents that I put in there, I just pop them right back out and you just put your top inside your bottom. Now, if you want, you may add some tape to hold it together, but that's not necessary. And this one will catch bugs. If you throw your bugs, oh, they go down in there, and then they're a lot harder to come out than they were to get down in there. So, bug trap. The third one 
that we have is using a cereal box. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open the top and the bottom and cut the cereal box in two. This will make two traps from each box. And it can be a pasta box, any, any type of box really that has a top and a bottom that can be removed. When we remove the top and the bottom, we're, we're just gonna work with the top half of this box for now. So we're gonna take the lid and we're going to tape the two sides together as if it were closed. And then a small piece of string right across the center. Cut two little slits. They're only about a quarter to half inch long, about a half an inch long, right in the center of the top of the box. Cut a little extra off so that it will turn freely in here. Put it down into those slits. And now if an animal like this cheetah, which I also got from Oriental Trading, were to step the, on there, he's trapped. Okay, so that was our third trap. Now this here is a Venus fly trap. It looks rather small right now because when the filming of this is occurring, it is winter time and it was in its dormancy. I and I have only woke it up a few weeks ago. Um, we at our church gave one of these to every child. But if you don't have a donor uh, willing to fund this, you might want to just get one to show. When we were talking about the Venus flytrap, we were talking about the fact that it's not only the animals that are carnivores, and we were able to teach the different words, omnivores, carnivores, herbivores. We classified this Venus flytrap as a carnivore because it will actually eat other animals like the insects. I had also just for fun got our kids as one of these Chinese figure traps just for fun. You don't have to do that. It's just an optional idea. So there you have it. Day two, fallen foliage. <laughs>